Well, I got done with one project, kind of got solved, and another one I've been sitting on for years, the French uh, grab rifle. I have one here, ah, handy. And this one here is a 1866-74. This was a Chaspo rifle, and I believe it was rebarreled. Uh, the thing about the Chaspo conversion, some of them were sleeved and leaves it with a strange uh, barrel groove diameter. This one, I believe I slugged it and it was correct for the grout. So I think it was rebarreled. Um, doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to give this one and I have another one uh, a try. I'm going to load up some shells. And what I'm going to use. I am going to use birch and brass. It's ex extremely expensive, but it's got the correct head, the correct rim thickness, it is the correct brass, and the correct length. You can make grout brass from the 348 Winchester, okay, which I did try. I bought the dies to neck them up. And I did get a bunch of them in here that I tried to they come up a bit short. Let me see what the difference is here. And you have to kind of cut back on the, cut a chamfer on the back end. I tried that. And you're still not going to quite headspace right because it doesn't have the correct rim thickness. Alright, these come out the formed brass from the 348 Winchester comes out to 2 inches, 182 thousandths. Now, the grass should be a length of 200, 335, which there is a variance in the difference. So, what I'm going to use, and I'll just show you on the ring shooting it. I'm going to use the Bertram brass. I got a set of dies for the grout, the correct set of dies. And the only problem is, you know, if you're using brass that's made from the 348 Winchester, you can get a shell holder. But if you're using the correct Bertram brass, you have to get a special shell holder that's a different size. And I had to make this myself. And I made it like uh, 50,000 thicker than a standard shell holder. Uh, that way, if I'm forming brass or something, it won't break like the Lees do with the 43 Mauser. Because what they do is they just use a standard blank and you use the, uh, you know, it's like 80, 90 thousandths rim thickness, which I think 50 or something is the most. It gets too thin and it breaks. Plus, I have to harden this, but I'm going to try it out, and if it works okay, then I'm going to harden it up. And I found, even though using birch and brass and the correct, proper dyes is extremely expensive, you know, all together it's probably more than the cost of a rifle, but the ammunition comes out correct, it's easy to reload, and I enjoy it a lot more. I mean, I'd like to go and say, oh yeah, let's form it, let's make it, but I just don't have the time. I spend more time here doing that than I do actually going out and shooting the guns. So, I'm going to load up, just like my standard, I found like, I think, 33 grains of IMR 4198 uh, with a little bit of Dacron using the same... Uh, Lime and bolt mold for the 43 Mauser because uh, the groove diameter on these guns are about the same, so it should work. And uh, they gave me pretty good consistency, about 1,400 feet per second in the uh, burndle, so it should translate, even though the bra case is larger, has a larger capacity, it should work out all right. And I went and picked up this old beat up bayonet. Okay, I mean, they get like over $100 for these bayonets, but I found one that handles a little chewed up. And that'll go on our bra. So 
So maybe we can go and reminiscent of our uh, days with the Mose and the Gants, fire a few rounds and then attach the bayonet. Oh boy, man, that's heavy. And see if it changes the point of impact. So we may have a little bit more fun with that once we start getting out to the range. Uh, we'll do a bayonet test with the bra. So that's what I'm working on. Uh, I'm not really going to do a reloading video on it because it's just like reloading anything else. But uh, once I perfect it, or what I'm going to do also is experiment with uh, paper patch bullets and black powder uh, loads. So I'll probably tune that in or show you that or I'll go through each and every, I'll make a video for each one, the smokeless load, because there are some people that like just to load smokeless powder in these guns and there's nothing wrong with it as long as you do it safely and do it correctly, and, you know, you should be okay. Uh, and there are people who just want the black powder. Uh, I don't think I'll duplex these, I tried duplexing in the uh, Berndel it didn't quite work out. I didn't like it. The bottleneck, it started getting weird. Uh, with a straight case like 4570 or 5070, it works out pretty good and I like it better. But the bottleneck, something about it, the neck and it, you have to be a little bit more careful with bottlenecks when loading in black powder. Alright, so that's it for the uh, Gra reloading or gra update. I'm going to get out. I had these rifles for a few years. Get out and start shooting them.